Hey, what's up? Welcome to a new episode. I got a duck because I don't want to hit my head on the flaps there. Uh, we are in Iowa City. This plane is a 1979 Cessna 182. Came all the way from New York to get worked on. We're doing a paint correction and ceramic coating to make the paint shiny again and protect it so it stays that way because you don't want to do a paint correction on a plane every six months otherwise. Um, that, that'll actually be a lot of work and I'm excited to share that with you because based on my test spot, we're gonna get some great results out of it. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do is pull the interior out, recondition the leather on there, repair some spots, uh, respray it all back into its original color and uh, freshen that up as well. So it'll be a great little project. I uh, One of my goals is not to hit my head on the flaps or ailerons, but uh, I'm excited to share it with you. So let's, uh, let's get it washed and uh, we'll go from there. So normally we would be using a 1 to 20 dilution of optimum no rinse, um, but because this plane was pretty dirty, instead of no rinse, we're using a 1 to 10 dilution of G-Technic W5 Citrus Degreaser. Um, I just needed a little bit more cleaning power, and uh, this was the product for the job, helped get the bugs off, and um, whatever this black stuff is that was kind of streaking down um, out of the engine compartment area, whatever it is, um, it was really embedded into the paint, so the, the citrus cleaner did a really good job of getting that out. Now, it wouldn't be assessing the detail if we didn't have some oil on the belly. So, um, same thing here. We're using the citrus degreaser, 1 to 10 dilution. Keep in mind that degreasers, you do need to dilute them because the, the degreasing aspect breaks up oil, but you still need water to carry away that broken down oil. So um, one to 10 dilution works really well, but when you have this much oil, you really just need to get the first layer off, kind of do a gross decon here, and then uh, come back, respray it with more cleaner, and then get the second layer off, and then the third layer if there's still product left behind. In this case, um, two layers and kind of swapping towels in between did a pretty good job and then I, I just went over it again one more time with a clean towel just to make sure there's nothing left behind there. On to paint correction. This airplane had a lot of oxidation and um, as you may know from other videos sometimes the best way to deal with that is to do a kind of a quick and dirty polish to remove the oxidation so you can kind of see how that pad is eating away at the at the chalkiness and then we follow up with a, a softer pad and do the actual polishing so as we began here we use the blue pad and you can see how much glossier that left side is versus the right side that's just removing the oxidation here you see the left half is whiter than the right half that's again, stripping off the oxidation. Um, all of that residue will be captured by the pad. So I like using these blue Rupes pads. They're a very coarse foam pad. Um, I think they're safer to use than a wool pad, especially when you have this many rivet heads and kind of panel gaps, things like that. But they also do a really good job of releasing paint residue. So when you wash your pad, which I did a lot of pad washing for this airplane. The blue Rupes foam just releases all that um, built up paint residue really well. And just a heads up, this is pretty aggressive rotary polishing, uh, especially when you kind of use the corner like that. My job here is to blow off the oxidation. So we, we want to remove the oxidation as fast as we can. I promise I'll come back and make sure there are no holograms left behind. That's the second step of polishing. Now the remaining clips here, this is going to be some polishing porn. So you have 
shiny on the right, oxidized on the left, a little bit of polishing, and uh, if you look closely enough, you can actually just see the oxidation getting blown off and removed, and the, the gloss comes up underneath, so it, it's a very satisfying process. So notice how this blue pad is almost bulging. Um, because it is a hard foam, it, it does lose material. Um, it's not really made to be used on a rotary, but um, you just notice there how it's kind of convex shaped. It started off flat. That's just Cessna panels, rivets, screws, just eating up the foam and shredding it all over the place. Sometimes I refer to this step of polishing as the knockdown step because we're knocking down the oxidation and kind of using a more crude method, we're using hyper polished, rotary, kind of faster arm movements just to get all that oxidation off. So when we go to our next step with a nicer polishing pad and a dual action polisher, um, we're not getting bogged down by all the oxidation. We can actually focus on polishing paint. So um, after the hyper polish step, panel wipe the whole airplane. Now we're using the dual action polisher with a softer pad and we're using a primer polish. So this polish will actually infuse little ceramic particles into the paint. So it's stuffing that paint, which is porous, with ceramic particles, which are gonna act as a primer for the ceramic coating later on. And uh, in this before and after, you can see the right half side. It, it's hard to tell on camera, but you can tell that that blue is a little bit cleaner at reflecting and that's removing the haze from that aggressive step. So here in that air intake, you can see how dull that was and um, we can't do quite as aggressive of a paint correction there, but you can see there's a definite improvement there. Now the cool thing after that primer polish, we don't have to panel wipe because it is a primer. Um, we can go straight to coating. So ceramic coating is wiped on in small sections. Being that this is old porous airplane, we wanna use a lot of product and really soak it into that paint. And um, after distributing the product evenly on the surface, we use a bunch of microfiber towels to remove the excess. If we just walk away from this, that coating is going to cure and it's gonna look like a streaky mess. So. Um, definitely want to make sure you get all that stuff back off. wish I had my foamer because this is, you hear that? The foam would actually lift that stuff up a little bit, but I left it in Minneapolis. Here, go back for it. You hear that? If you look close enough, you'll actually notice my towel turning white. So this cleaning step is removing oxidized paint to some degree. It's not perfect, but there, there's an actual improvement in the reflection of the paint just by cleaning it. You can kind of see the before, how it's super yellow and dull. And then after cleaning, it's a little bit whiter, um, but it, it's not enough to really start coating. So here we're uh, using the citrus cleaner again, one to 10 dilution and uh, keeping it plenty wet, getting all of the loose oxidation off any dirt, exhaust, dust, who knows what else is on there um, to get the surface ready for coating.
Now as I was cleaning the wings, I noticed that the paint looked pretty thin. And sure enough, here um, on the aileron, we're at about 60 microns. And on top of the wing, we're getting all sorts of readings. So 36 microns is actually pretty low. Um, to give you an idea, your, your car's clear coat is about 50 microns alone. And there's another 50 of paint under there and primer. So um, when I see numbers like 23, I start to get worried because there's not a lot of paint there to do a paint correction. Um, you know, the good thing is that once we coat this, we're not going to have to do paint corrections on it again, but I also have to be careful with what I do because I don't want to burn through the paint. To give you an idea um, of what the rest of the airplane looked like, here on this super shiny fuselage, which we just coated, we're in the 60s. 60 I'm okay with. Um, 20, it's a little tricky. So let's, uh, let's do some test spots here. I'm gonna continue my ongoing struggle with masking tape here. And we're gonna mark off some areas and I'm gonna show you what each step does in terms of enhancing the paint, what it looks like, and what some of the advantages are. So first we start with our knockdown step, rotary polish, blue Rupes pad, hyper polish, and uh, we just go to town removing that oxidation. Now, the far right square, we're gonna leave that as just the cleaning. So I just cleaned that, didn't do anything else. All the other squares are going to get this initial uh, knockdown aggressive polish. rid of the oxidized paint residue and polish residue. You can see that shine coming in nicely there. And we're going to panel wipe all of these. So this is a strong alcohol solution to remove any remaining polish residue. So we're looking at just naked paint. Now we're adding the primer, triple P. This is that primer that infuses kind of ceramic nanoparticles into the paint. And we're not gonna do that right square. We're just gonna do the two left sections here. Work that in. So after this step, um, you wait about 45 minutes an hour and then you can go straight to coating. So the far left square, we're going to coat. So here's the coating going on. And then we, of course, wipe it back off again. Here we have untouched, cleaning only, hard polish, gentle finishing polish, and coating. And here again, we have nothing that got cleaned. So the important thing to note here is that the coating by itself isn't what is responsible for making your airplane shiny. It helps, definitely helps a little bit, but most of your shine is gonna come from paint correction. And that's honestly most of what you're paying for is a good paint correction. Now, I, uh, I've been known to struggle with tape and I could have cut all of this out, but I, I think you need to see the struggle on what all goes into these details. So now let's use the gloss meter to see what we got going on here for differences in gloss. We're gonna start at a 60 degree reading angle, which is good for kind of semi-gloss surfaces. And you can see our first panel here is reading at about 10.4. Uh, this device is not super accurate, so the numbers don't mean anything. We're looking at relative improvement. So we went from untouched to just washed, and we're still in the low teens. Um, you know, the, the machine doesn't really differentiate that much between those two. Now we do um, hard polish, so the knockdown polish and we're jumping up to 60 gloss units. So a definite improvement there. You can see there's some variability in the tool, so that's why I like to get 
three sets of readings for each one. And now we go from hard polish to actual proper gentlemanly paint correction. And you can see that too um, raised the gloss quite a bit. Now to compare good paint correction to coating, we're actually gonna change the device from a 60 degree reading angle to a 20 degree angle because that's better at teasing out fine gloss differences. So you notice we're down to 20 now. Um, these are, this is completely different. A one to two point difference at 20 is a bigger change than at 60. So we're at about 19-ish on paint correction. And you can see we're in the low 20s for um, gloss. We've got a little outlier here, but overall you can see the gloss adds a little bit of shine the coating adds a little bit of shine, um, but really paint correction is what comes up with the majority of shine. Now we do coat it because we want the airplane to stay clean. And this is a demonstration of its cleaning property. So um, that nasty liquid is what comes out of my polishing pads. So it's gonna have oily polish residue, paint residue, whatever pollution is in there, um, water, and you can see how on the coated side, the paint doesn't allow that pollution to penetrate. On the left side, it just kind of diffuses into the paint. And motor oil does the exact same thing here. I just didn't have any to pour on the airplane. Motor oil will diffuse into the paint. So when you clean it, um, you actually have to pull it out of the paint. And that doesn't always work very well. On the coated side, it stays on top so you can remove it. And, and really a lot of it will just fly off the plane as well. So here you can see again, side by side, um, that, that coated paint just wants nothing to do with whatever pollution you're putting on there. Whereas the uncoated side's like, hey, welcome, come on in, make yourself at home. So that's why we coat. And also because when your paint's 30 microns, you don't have the luxury of polishing this every six months. Since we have nice, large, flat surfaces on top of the wing, I actually use the Rupes to do my initial knockdown step as well. So I'm still using Hyper Polish, still using the same blue pads, um, but just using this machine. So I can run it at a higher power setting and not worry about overheating the battery. Um, the one thing I do want to worry about when working on top of wings like this and especially when I'm shredding a lot of pads, here's a nice little gloss before and after, um, is taping up fuel caps. That pad, as I told you, is constantly breaking down and flying off little chunks of foam. And I'm actually using a leaf blower to clear all that stuff off. So when I'm polishing, I don't want that foam to go into the fuel tank. That would not be good. So. Despite my relationship with tape, we taped that off so we don't have to worry about it. Now because the distance between these ribs on the flaps and ailerons are too small for the um, dual action polisher, I use the rotary here and make sure to hit them from both sides so we get all the oxidation off. And You can see we're going from not reflecting light to reflecting light so that's, uh, that's pretty nice. And there we are after polishing. And if you haven't seen my other videos and you wanna know where all that oxidation went, well, it goes in the polishing pad, which is then sprayed out um, through this very uh, messy process, which I've referred to as the Persian pad washer. Basically spray no rinse on the bottom. Sometimes a little bit of optimum fabric clean actually works really well. Um, and then you just spin it out in a bucket and you may have to scrape the underside a little bit to get all the moisture out and uh, you go back to polishing. It's a quick way to wash your pads, um, especially if you don't have access to compressed air and, and compressed air will take all the paint residue and it'll just aerosolize it all over the hanger. Then you're breathing it, it's getting all over. So despite being small range messy, long range, um, this method is a lot cleaner. Now I don't, it didn't appear that I bothered filming coating of the wings. Um, so here's just some more polishing shots and, and you can see how glossy the wings get just from polishing. 
But we got more exciting things to share in this video than coding the wings. So you remember the seats we pulled out at the beginning of the episode? Well, here they are in my garage. They're in pretty good shape considering the age, but there's some cracks that are happening. Um, there's paint missing. So they uh, they can really do with a nice refresh. Um, and, and the foam's in really good shape. The leather's actually in pretty good shape, so it doesn't make sense to replace. So that's why we're going to refresh. Start off by sanding. Um, if you haven't cleaned the seats already, that's something you would do beforehand. Um, but I'm using the Color Lock sanding pads. They're, they're aggressive yet soft. Uh, you want your sanding pad to contour to the surface so you're not creating kind of hot spots for sanding. So we start off by just leveling off um, the texture, getting rid of some of the old paint. And um, if you have cracks, usually the cracks have sharp edges. So this will help level that off as well. After sanding, we uh, wipe it down and then um, we start with filling. Now this is a very elastic leather filler, so it's not like Bondo where it, it hardens up. This remains flexible and um, kind of moves with the seat. So we work that in, um, try and fill in those cracks best we can. As it dries, it'll contract, so it usually will take several applications of filler to actually get the desired results. Um, but you just start by filling in. Um, if you have your color pre-mixed already, which I didn't, you can mix your paint color with your filler, so it's a little better camouflage that way. But um, it's basically going to be multiple layers of filling and then sanding. So fill a little, let it dry, sand it, level it off and repeat. And in many cases, actually, even after you paint, um, you end up doing some more refilling because after you paint, you can really see what kind of defects stick out still and bother you enough. And sometimes something that you think is going to stick out after you paint it, it's not really visible. So after you think you're done filling, sand, wipe down all the sanding residue. And then uh, the other areas on the seat that are also getting resprayed, um, but don't necessarily need to be filled. I just give those a quick scuffing. I'm not trying to remove all of the paint. I'm really just trying to scuff the surface so a new paint will stick. Um, when you have exposed stitching like you do here, you wanna be really careful not to sand over the stitches because that'll tear them up. So just be careful with that if you, for some reason, decide to do this as well. So here are the seats um, prepped. You can see the lower half is sanded. Uh, the top half is filled and sanded. I also pulled the side panel because it had this deeper scrape um, where the door handle had been kind of rubbing the paint off. So same thing, just fill it with filler, let it dry, fill it with more filler, let it dry, um, and then paint. Now to get the color, um, we could do it by eye. I'm not very good at color matching my eye, so it would take me a long time. But Color Lock came up with this awesome color scanner. So I take a bunch of readings and it actually spits out a formula for um, the color code. So here we're going to mix up and um, you'll see all the different colors that go in to make that specific shade of Cessna Blue. Now those were the colors you guessed that would go into this, right? Yeah, me neither. So once we get the paint stirred up, we actually start with a coat of primer. Um, helps with adhesion, obviously. And then we do multiple light coats of paint. So um, the cool thing with this paint being water-based is that you spray a little bit on, and then you can use a heat gun or hair dryer, dry that layer, and then add another layer on top. So you, you're, you're building thin layers. You don't want to have one really thick layer. The end goal here is to have the finished product still feel and look like leather. You don't want it 
plasticky looking, which in many cases, if you don't have a good color match and you have to put more paint on to conceal the fact that you didn't have a very good color match. So um, that's, that's just not gonna look good. Now, as we uh, build up our layers here, it's important to note that OEM leather is actually cow skin, paint layer, and then clear coat. So we finish with a matte clear coat layer that's gonna look like the factory finish, and it also gives you more wear protection and, and it's just gonna feel new again. So that's what's going on here. Now, despite using the same paint on the bottom and the top, the bottoms look green in the video. I can assure you that's just the camera. So you remember what this looked like coming in. Now here it is, all done, ready to go back home. What a transformation. You remember what that tail looked like in those top surfaces. And here we are. Extensive paint correction, ceramic coating. This plane is ready to go. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you like content like this, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.